Hey everyone, and welcome back to A Complete Denture Journey for the New York City College of Technology Department of Restorative Dentistry Complete Dentures 1 course. This video is video number 6 of the instructional video set. It's on record-based and occlusion rim fabrication. This is a laboratory instructional video. The first step in creating a record base is blocking out the undercuts. In order to block out, we need to block out any major undercuts just as we did during the custom tray fabrication process. It should be noted that not all blackout areas will be the same. They are particular to each individual patient. Once blockout is complete, you can apply petroleum jelly directly to the cast. It will aid in the retrieval of the record base without fracturing any important anatomical landmarks. Next, we begin the record base fabrication itself. We use in this video light cure material. This material is easy to manipulate, adapt, and trim. It is soft until cured within a light cure unit. Adapt the light cure material directly onto the model. Ensure that it covers all necessary anatomical landmarks. Although this material is the same as the one used for custom tray fabrication, it's important to realize that there are big differences. One is that the borders are fully extended on a record base, and a record base does not have a custom tray handle. Once the light cure material is fully adapted, you may trim the excess. Ensure that the record base borders are extended fully into the sulcus areas and cover the posterior palatal seal area. When trimming the light cure material, don't forget to free the frenums. Trim the excess away from all the frenums. This will allow for a comfortable fit and a full range of motion during the custom tray impression visit. When it comes to the mandibular record base, cutting a line in the tongue area will allow for a better adaptation and prevent from the material tearing. Trimming the excess is the same as you performed on the maxillary and ensure that the record base borders are extended fully into the sulcus areas and on the mandible, ensure that they cover the retromolar pads. Once adaptation and trimming is complete, you may then take the light cure material and place it into a light cure unit. Once the record bases are cured, you could retrieve the record base from the model by slowly prying the record base from the model from multiple different directions. Forcing it off in a single direction may result in damage to the master cast. Once the record bases are safely retrieved from the models, they can be placed back into the light curing unit with the intaglio surface facing up to make sure that the material is fully cured. Once the material is fully cured, you can begin smoothing the borders. Be sure the borders are smooth. Check for sharpness on the borders with your fingers. If it feels rough or sharp to your finger, it will feel even sharper intraorally to the patient. The final step of smoothing should be performed with a fine carbide burr. Tapered carbides will aid in finishing hard to reach areas like the frenums. The incisive papilla is a very important landmark when it comes to the setting of the teeth. Locating the incisive papilla will aid in the proper positioning of the maxillary centrals. They can be estimated to be about 5 to 7 millimeters in front of the papilla. Cutting a hole in the base plate will allow you to view this incisive papilla during the process of setting teeth. In a previous video of the custom tray visit, we spoke about planning for the next appointment. The use of a papilla meter aids in more accurately designing the length of a maxillary occlusion rim. The question becomes, should we be using the averages or should we be trying to be more accurate? 22 millimeters is the average height of a maxillary occlusal rim in the anterior region. However, every patient varies. With the use of a papilla meter, a more accurate length can be made on a maxillary occlusion rim. 
With the use of a papillometer, for this patient, we have designated a length of 27 millimeters, which is quite a difference from the average 22. Once the record bases have been completed, it is now time to fabricate the occlusion rim. Preformed wax rims can be used to fabricate the occlusion rims. The Air Force Manual mentions two other methods of fabricating occlusion rims, one being through the folding of a base plate wax or using an occlusion rim former. A tip to adapting the occlusion rim to the record base is to cut into the wax. This allows heat to easily penetrate through the wax and soften it. It will allow for easy manipulation of the wax by hand. During the process of occlusion rim fabrication, be sure to continuously check for desired measurements, whether that be with a papillometer or the use of average measurements. The average measurements for a maxillary occlusion rim are as follows. 22 millimeters of height in the anterior and 18 millimeters of height in the posterior. In the anterior, the width should read 8 millimeters and in the posterior, the width should read 10 millimeters. Once your desired measurements are reached, you may loot the wax to the record base. Use base plate wax to seal the wax rim to the record base or base plate. Ensure the facial surface is a minimum of perpendicular to the occlusal plane and preferably with a slight anterior tilt. It is common during the looting process while you're manipulating the wax, measurements may change. So be sure to continuously check your measurements during the occlusion rim fabrication process. Although the height measurements of occlusion rims are very important, so are the widths. Be sure to achieve the proper widths of both incisal and occlusal areas of the occlusion rim. The posterior should be wider than the anterior rim, just as in natural dentition. It should be noted that widths are a matter of preference. Although the Air Force Manual states these specific measurements of 8 and 10 millimeters, depending on the school of thought, these measurements do vary. Although not discussed in the Air Force Manual, proper lingual contours are also important. Contouring the lingual portion of the rim will allow for proper room for the tongue and facilitate the evaluation process. The end of the occlusion rim should end just anterior to the tuberosity on the maxillary at a 45 degree angle. A handheld butane torch aids in smoothing the occlusion rim, as well as softening the wax to shape as desired. The technique in the application of the occlusion rim to the record base for the mandibular arch is the same as the maxillary. However, they do follow different measurements. The measurements for a mandibular occlusion rim are as follows. In the anterior, it should measure about 18 millimeters in height, while in the posterior, there is no average number. It should only reach two-thirds the height of the retromolar pad, which will vary from patient to patient. The widths of the mandibular occlusion rim are also the same as the maxillary. In the posterior, they should read 10 millimeters, while in the anterior, it should read 8 millimeters. Achieving a uniform height can sometimes prove difficult when fabricating an occlusion rim. Use a separating medium on the occlusal surface of the occlusion rim and a flat surface. This can aid in achieving a level uniform occlusion rim as seen in the video. Once you have reached your desired height, you can loot the wax to the record base. Use base plate wax to seal the wax rim to the base plate just as you did on the maxillary occlusion rim. Once again, it is important to pay attention to the proper lingual contours, especially for the mandibular arch. The tongue space needs to be accurate in order for the clinician to properly evaluate the rims. Make sure to achieve your proper widths, as you see in the video, the anterior significantly thinner than the posterior, as they read about 8 millimeters in the posterior and about 6 millimeters in the anterior.
A tip to achieving a high shine is using soft packaging foam on a mandrel with a handpiece. Traditionally, this would conclude the occlusion rim and record base fabrication process. However, there are certain things that you can do to take it one step further. First is declaring the midline. On average, it's very common that the midline of a patient coincides with the median suture line. The purpose of designating the midline will aid in possibly setting two centrals or using something as shown in this video, an aesthetic template. In order to apply this aesthetic template, fold in between each tooth embrasure and apply it to the template accordingly. The fold should be about at a 70 degree angle. Remember that these occlusion rims are used to evaluate the patient's intraoral environment. Without teeth in place, it may be hard to visualize where teeth should be when staring at a solid pink block of wax. By using this aesthetic template or setting some initial teeth, it can aid in the evaluation process. The use of the aesthetics template aids in the midline determination, the smile design, and can reduce try-ins. It can also be performed by the clinician.